Hello and welcome everyone. My name is AdlerGG and this is a Gamers Class video. So we will talk a little bit about monitors, uh, refresh rate, curve monitors, ultra widescreen monitors and we will also take a look at the graphic settings themselves and also I will try to give a little bit of advice regarding the settings when it comes to low-end users and high-end users. To start things off with, I just want to talk a little bit of the performance in Dota generally speaking and monitors you should use. So Dota is a game that comes along with a lot of performance issues in my opinion because of all the particles and illusions like PL and Monkey King old and a lot of users uh, complain that the game does not run stable. And uh, this is because um, the CPU load on Dota 2 is very high and the GPU load is not that high. So a lot of people believe that buying a good GPU and uh, top end graphic cards will fix issues. But uh, you need to keep in mind that the CPU is just as important as the GPU, if not even more important. So when we speak about monitors, um, I think for now 144 uh, Hz. So the monitor refresh rate is the thing that we want to consider if we play games, generally speaking. And um, it's just a good thing to have. So the important part is that if we run 144 Hz monitors, that we have enough frames to work with. So we need a computer that actually can run 144 frames stable. So if you have a low end machine and you want to switch to a 144 Hz monitor, uh, I think that's not the way to go. So basically if we want 144 Hz monitors um, We either need to go lower in the settings until we have a stable uh, frame rate above 144 uh, frames Or we should basically upgrade hardware first But the thing is 144 Hz monitors feel really good for the eyes so um, for example uh, I run a 144Hz monitor for the gaming and I have multiple um, other monitors in my studio um, or at my workplace basically and you can clearly see the difference and the feeling when you watch uh, stuff on a 60Hz monitor right next to a 144Hz monitor. So if you still want to use a 144Hz monitor um, on lower uh, end machines basically um, and your frames are not stable you will maybe have some stuttering or frame freezes or maybe you get some motion blur uh, due to the fact that your machine can basically not hold the 144 fps stable if that is the case you can uh, try to basically half the frames to 72 and try to keep them stable at 72 um, so you don't run into stuttering and uh, blur effects or you have the possibility of running um, external tools like FreeSync on AMD machines or G-Sync on Nvidia so basically um, it will do some calculations in the back and will try to um, make the experience smoother even though you don't have a stable 144 frames at your disposal. Another important thing is if we run 144 Hz monitors we need to make sure that the monitor is running at the refresh rate. So when stuff gets delivered to your place or you buy it the monitors are usually not run on a native 144 hertz refresh rate so we need to make sure that the monitor is actually running at the target refresh rate so just to give you a, a quick example if you run amd drivers you will have a different interface but basically at the desktop settings 
you will find something like this. So it's refresh rate. And this is basically the refresh rates the monitors support. So those are some standard values. And we need to make sure that the refresh rate inside the drivers are set to 144 Hertz. And we also need to have a look at the monitor driver itself. So basically we need to find this window and it's also there on Windows 10. And it basically shows all the resolution related driver stuff. And we also need to make sure that the monitor itself is set to 144 Hertz base. So usually the monitor runs at 60 Hertz and we need to make sure that the monitor itself is set at 144 Hertz. Then we need to make sure that the monitor is set uh, driver bias from our graphic card to 144 hertz and then we need to make sure that in game uh, we also have the 144 hertz selected um, or make sure that it's shown with 144 hertz so we can guarantee that it runs at this frame rate or not frame rate but refresh rate of the monitor and have enough frames to support it another interesting thing is curve monitors so curve monitors are a new thing i would say and what they can provide is the effect of immersion into the game so you feel like you're inside the game uh, because of the curve effect the problem is that your entire vision field needs to be immersed into the monitor basically so if you run a curve monitor or you think about buying a curve monitor to have a better gaming experience, it needs to be really big. And this will make it expensive because we need a big 144 Hz monitor. So we are basically uh, making sure that the entire vision field is saved and um, that the entire vision field is there. Um, that we can use for the eyes basically so curve will give you no advantage at all um, and to be honest it will actually reduce your vision field on the um, curve uh, curved sides themselves uh, just because of the curve effect so i would not recommend curve monitors generally speaking but if you can afford it to buy a bigger monitor then it can be good. Let's talk about ultra wide screen. So I'm running at uh, an aspect resolution of 19, uh, 16 to 9, so pretty standard, uh, 1080p. And this is like the old gen of monitors that I'm running. And uh, people slowly but steady move to different aspect ratios and bigger monitors. So the thing is if we change the aspect ratio to let's say 21 to 10 we will basically gain a lot of space to the left side of the monitor and the right side of the monitor and this will increase our vision field significantly the problem is that there is a lot more frames uh, a lot more pixel space that needs to be rendered basically so it requires insane hardware to run smooth then another problem is that 144 hertz are basically not available for um, those super ultra uh, 4k hd monitors and if it's available it's usually not native and done with software so it will basically calculate uh, the frame rate to the targets or it will calculate the frames in a different way and add some frames that way to match uh, the refresh rate of the monitor or they will do some tricks to actually achieve those uh, refresh rates so the technology is simply not there basically and if it's there the price is simply insane and um, i did some research on this topic and the latest report was uh, last month and um, it's just not there so if you have insane amounts of money to spend go ahead 
Uh, it's a big advantage uh, because of the vision field increase. But I think um, if the monitor costs like three times um, than a high-end uh, gaming PC, it's like hmm, troublesome. So let's come uh, to the graphic settings themselves and um, I want to start first with low-end users. So a lot of players um, play Dota 2 on laptops or on older hardware. Uh, even myself, I run hardware that is like six to seven years old and I have no trouble at all. So, um, but if you run lower-end hardware or older hardware, uh, make sure that you run the game in DX9 and do not try to go for uh, DX11 or um, Vulkan or OpenGL. Uh, the thing is, if you have trouble on lower end machines with uh, DX9, you can also try OpenGL. Um, I don't recommend it, but there's a lot of threads um, where people did some tests and OpenGL can help on lower end machines. Then for high end users, we basically want to go for DX11. It will lead to faster loading times, especially on the initial load, um, but we have commands if we want to uh, shorten loading times and preloading times, generally speaking. So DX11, uh, DX11 is just uh, a thing that makes stuff a little bit smoother if you are on ultra high-end machines or high-end machines generally speaking so newest gen hardware and um, it will basically cost you a little bit of CPU and will just make stuff a little bit smoother but you can even on on high-end machines you could um, potentially run Dota and DX9 if you have any trouble if you have struggle on high-end machines, however, uh, you can also try Vulkan, but uh, you need, of course, everything installed for Vulkan. Um, I don't want to make like a super technical video about all the stuff and benchmarks and uh, all the different things you can do here. Uh, I just want to give you an, a general overview because otherwise we could make like a 10-hour video about this stuff. So, for starters, if you run Vulkan and uh, you run on AMD high-end machines and you have trouble, just try it. Then for the other video settings, it's like hard to say what is optimal, but keep in mind that we always want to match our monitor's refresh rate. So if you run at 75 Hertz, uh, we want at least uh, 75 frames per second stable if you run 144 Hertz um, We w want to Have a stable 144 Hertz the thing is shadows um, for example and tree wind and grass will take a lot of um, CPU load and um, That's why I have this stuff off so basically everything that's off at the moment uh, can cause performance if you issues if your machine is not really good and I would basically just put the rendering quality at 100% and then uh, turn off uh, those things and if it's still not enough just go lower for the effects and texture quality and um, basically turn off grass and tree wind and just slowly but steady uh, go lower until you hit your target frame rates that you want to achieve. So in my case, um, I just have it like that. So if I load into a lobby, um, we can see that uh, on the top right, I have the FPS after the load available. And we can see that we sit stable at like 200 FPS. And uh, I think anything above 150 stable, as long as you run on a 144 Hz monitor is fine. Just need to make sure it's as stable as possible because team fights will um, basically slow everything down a bit and uh, have huge huge impacts on uh, the game's performance generally speaking then for um, stability we have another very controversial topic which is the v sync so the v sync will basically sync uh, the frames in game 
to your monitor refresh rate. So basically, if you run uh, at 144 hertz monitor, it will try to sync it uh, on 144 frames to basically gain stability. But the problem with vSync is that a lot of users complain that there's uh, some form of input lag. So if you send commands, that the commands are delayed. So I would usually try to turn it off and only turn it on if you run into any trouble with FPS and with the game, generally speaking. To summarize uh, this video really quick, we have 144 Hertz monitors as a standard and I highly recommend that you switch to 144 Hertz monitor just for better experience, uh, smoother experience, less eye strain and um, that you make sure that if you aim to buy 144 Hertz monitors top right you can see the FPS that you sit at a sta stable high FPS and it needs to be stable above the 144 Hertz preferably and uh, curve monitors can be good if you have a lot of money that you want to spend so you need to buy big curve monitors to make sure your entire vision field is filled with the monitor to uh, experience the game immersion effect um, for 29 to 10 aspect ratio monitors so ultra widescreen 4k stuff um, it's not there yet or we are simply not there yet technology wise uh, and you can basically go for it if you have insane amounts of money to spend and um, for the graphic settings uh, for lower end machines you want dx9 for higher end machines you want dx11 and if you are on amd or have any trouble uh, on high-end machines try vulcan as a rendering options and basically always make sure that you play around with the video settings until you match your monitors refresh rate in form of a stable frame rate so my name is atlet g and thanks for watching